Okay. Checking one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. I am here working on this project for Frank. He wants to do a build a house like this, which is kind of cool. I grew up uh, in a house kind of like this, and um, there's a bit of nostalgia working on a, a house like this. So I've already got the floor plans kind of laid out based on these. This is typical of what I get uh, at atdrafting.com, which is cool because it's a very clear and concise, you know, plan of what they want, but typically we'll have to alter it for you know the site or you know they'll want another bedroom or a, more space or bigger rooms so it's a good start it's a good place to start but I've already kind of gotten what I thought uh, it's an impression of what I thought they wanted so I'm just going to start here with some walls my Medique my favorite extension and I'm going to load this wall preset that I've made load load <laughs> and what I like to do is offset um, my walls a half the framing a half inch uh, because I want my I want my sheeting there, you can see, to be flush with the, the house line. You want your you want, you want your siding to be the only thing that hangs past the house line, and you can see here that's what's going to happen. And so this. Uh, makes pretty quick work. Now what's nice about my version of Medique is that, well it's now everyone's version of Medique, is that I ask um, Nathan, who I've become uh, to know well, to make, help, uh, help me figure out how to do these uh, sidings, these claddings that are actual line work. Uh, he has some, <coughs> excuse me, he has some that are just um, images, um, and I'll show you what I mean. Let's say I do a, well, let's just change one of these. We'll just close this out, and I'll show you. All right, this is the other nice thing about his extension, is you can edit the wall that you've built with it. And if you go to, it's like somebody's trying to text me. If you go to down to where the wall cladding is, there it is, and you pick out one of these other ones like uh, night gray and update the wall, you can see this is this is just an image. It's a very good image. It fools you, but there's no line work. So the problem with this is. When you go to print this with certain styles, the images won't show up. Oh, well, if you want to, um, uh, when we when we print our construction documents, they're typically in just black and white because you know paying for color uh, construction documents is like you know ten or fifteen dollars a sheet for a twenty-four by thirty-six inch sheet. So. We usually print them in black and white. So when you do that, you would lose the lines of the siding. But see, since I actually have line work, the siding is a, is a three-dimensional object now. So I'm going to change that back. So anyway, I asked Nathan how, how to deal with this, and he showed me how to build these how to make these and it's real simple you just go to the extension global settings and in materials you can set parameters right here like here's my lap here's the one I've done I've done battens and lap 
and you just tell it the width and uh, and the and the and the thickness. And here on the battens, you've got 16 inches on center, inch and a half wide, and I've got them like a quarter inch thick just to keep them a low profile. So that's kind of cool. So that was the exterior walls. That was felt. That was relatively easy. I'm going to do some interior walls. And I'm going to go ahead and offset them a half inch right quick. I hope this air conditioner is not too loud. I, it's getting rather warm in Tennessee. And so... I have found that this is a... is a nice investment of time to offset these because I like to draw the walls at full thickness which is four and a half so which is your stud three and a half and drywall half inch drywall on each side it actually turns out to be four nine sixteenths but we don't draw it that way um, because of all the matter between the studs and the sheetrock and the mud on the wall and the paint you actually end up with four nine sixteenths, and that's what your jams on your doors are. If you call up your lumber company and ask for door jams, they're going to ask you, are they four nine sixteenths or uh, five and nine sixteenths, uh, or a six and nine sixteenths. Anyway, so let's see. This is the fireplace. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to do the fireplace, but we'll go ahead and. We'll go ahead and frame her up just for the fun of it. And then what I'm going to do is uh, so let's do like a normal carpenter's wood, and we will start with the longest walls first. When you're framing a house, you build the longest walls first and then go to the shortest walls because uh, that allows you to uh, the shorter walls take up less space obviously and, and as you go deeper in progressively smaller you, you have spaces with to build those walls within if that makes any sense <laughs> so let's go to our extension our wall extension and we're going to pick an interior wall I just happen to have one two before nine interior wall and all that does is it changes it to uh, drywall on both sides and I think I have the uh, I think I have the yeah I have the drywall turned off so so I can see better oh. That says that's going to be a two by six wall, isn't it? That is, oh, wait a minute, something didn't load. Now I did just upload a new version, so uh, let's do a little short wall here. No, something is wrong. What we'll have to do is change this to about four and I don't know why it, sh it says interior interior why it was showing siding let's just go what we will do is we'll just go to regular wall and we'll call it interior interior and we'll use two by fours and 83 and a half is what the door should be. That should be, that should fix it. Yeah, there we go. We'll draw this one wall and we'll check it out to make sure. Where is that right there? There we go. The nice thing about the extension is that it draws the T's, it connects the walls together. So you got your T there. 
and this thing is in the way and you know overlaps the top plate like we would really do and when we're building so that's the nice thing about that and then when you get ready to turn on you know it should have the uh, should have this the gypsum on there wall well we'll have to turn it on we'll, we'll turn on the gypsum I usually have the jit board turned off unless unless the owner wants to see it because uh, I like being able to see the structure there's that wall so our next longest wall I think at this point it doesn't probably matter we'll go back here and it should have kept that yeah once you set those settings in a, in a drawing session it will um, let's see I just realized that I should stop this one here and then go back and do it this way my lines overlapped. There we go. And when I did that it kind of screwed up the corner but this is a good example of uh, I should have I should have kept going in that direction but I didn't have my line offset there. But what you can do is grab this wall and tell it that the, the end corner you see the end corner condition is an outside corner and you see it uh, it changed that and then we changed this one the ending corner to an outside corner oh that's what happens you, this one has to extend three and a half more inches so this should be 6.5 I should be able to regenerate that's got a little out of sequence let's do this again what I should have done was had this line offset a half inch this way. Then you'll see how that affects it. It uh, it configures the wall properly. Two before, yeah. So see now I can go to this outside corner, and both walls will be they won't freak out. There we go. See the corners should be overlapped like that. And if you go in sequence, you know, if you go with boom, boom, then the extension knows how to configure the corners. And then let's do this wall. Which way did I draw this one? This one goes this way. This way. You see how I'm doing the walls pro progressively in the order of length. I'm not drawing the short walls first. They get shorter and shorter. So this will be one half inch that way, one half inch this way. Oh, I meant to mention earlier why I do the uh, I draw the walls full width. This is a pretty big controversy in the drafting world <laughs> uh, because uh, there's there's like a, a huge debate whether you dimension framing or a finished wall. And I always do finished wall because um, the owners really want to see when the owners evaluating their floor plan, they want to see the finished size they don't really care about the little, little logistics you come up with as to where the framing is 
uh, they want to know if, if their bedroom is 12 feet or not or 14 feet or 16 feet so what I do is I draw the walls full width and I dimension to those then my framer always knows that uh, you know I've known Paco for almost 20 years probably over 20 years and he knows you know once you've worked with a framer long enough he knows that when he sees a dimension of 12 feet say for this bedroom he knows to add an inch to that a half inch there and a half inch there for the framing he knows it's really 12 foot one so it's a matter of so I've got this one going this way so I'm going to start this way come around here but I used to spend hours and hours doing this framing because I was, I was kind of anal about uh, the framing because um, I used to do a lot of estimating which I got burnt out on and don't do anymore <laughs> Uh, and uh, I used to, you know, I had to figure all the studs and all the, just everything. Now, that was going the wrong way. And so I would draw everything by hand. And of course, you know, um, SketchUp has the proper tools for that. I mean, um, you know, we, the studs would be components. I would have all the studs as components because then if an owner changed their mind and wanted nine foot walls instead of eight foot walls, I could just go in. But I still had to move the plates up and fix the sheeting and the siding and all that stuff. It was a mess. It would take forever. Let's see if I have any comments. Not yet. Is everybody still in bed? On the, we are public, right? Yep. Yeah. So, let's see, we'll build this little, let's see, this wall, I think what I need to do here is do this, this way, and this way. I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and frame this wall all the way up and then I'll figure out, I'll probably explode it um, later and um, make it either an angled or a half wall or whatever I have to do for the stair. A lot of, a lot of times these stair walls will stop at a certain place and become open you know the stair will be open either that or people will just leave them enclosed like that so all right that's that these are going to mosquito flying around now let's do the second floor is going to be a little more complicated i probably should figure out the roof i'm trying to turn a 2d two-dimensional photograph in three-dimensional space it's funny turn around uh, oh, that mosquito got zapped by the bug zapper. <laughs> I have this like little indoor bug zapper. <laughs> it's kind of funny. The tiny shack is not mosquito proof. It's kind of mosquito proof. It is now. <laughs> and uh, let's see. I don't know. I really, I've got extra weather stripping around the doors and everything. Sometimes I think they're coming, you know, metal roofs, you'll have the the little, uh, the ribs in the roof. Sometimes I think insects are climbing up through there or at the ridge, your ridge cap will lap over, but there's a gap because you're, you want ventilation. So sometimes I think, you know, especially stink bugs. I had a stink bug infestation last fall and that's why I got the bug zapper. I was catching one or two stink bugs a day for three months and I think they're actually coming in through the metal roof system and coming down through the attic and I have this tongue and groove ceiling and I think there's little holes either that or where the ceiling fan or light fixtures come through they're sneaky man they'll find a way through they are sneaky so what I was saying about this is I think what I'm going to do is actually 
do the floor system on this. And then, yeah, let's do the floor system. Now these spans, I don't think they necessarily figured this part out, but uh, this house is, uh, is it 32 feet, so you know, they're gonna have to have they're gonna have to have some load bearing walls, which means we need to figure out which ones are gonna be load bearing. And either that or we could break it up into spans this way. It's still fifteen feet. It's more than a two by ten at sixteen inches on center will span fourteen feet. And of course the span is measured between the walls. So that's four even that's fourteen five. So we're looking at uh, we're looking at wood eye joists, really no matter what we do. So I'm going to assume, uh, let's look at our, well, I know 11 and 7 eighths, what is going on with my display? Uh, going to, I'm going to assume a 11 and 7 eighths, yeah, 11 and 7 eighths LVL, so, I mean, uh, wood eye joist. So let's go to truss, let's go to, um, uh, floor truss and I think in here we have wait was I in roof I was in roof wasn't I go to floor truss let's go to okay here we go TGI lumber a PCI floor a PCI floor okay and let's go from here and we want our framing to line up see because you want your sheeting to be just con continuous all the way up. So we want to click on this corner right here. And then I think I'm spanning in the right direction. And we're going to find out. I thought I'll have to redo it. And then we're going to click that point. Rim board, yes. Okay. Joy spacing, we're going to leave it at 16 for now. Yes, we want advanced. And then no, no seal plate because we're sitting on top of a wall. And insert no sheeting. Yes. All right. I think it would be cool if he had Advantech. Um, let's turn off the floor sheeting for a second. What happened to my default tray? That's weird. Let's go to flooring and we'll turn off the floor sheeting. Yeah. Yeah, that's the right direction. And did I pick out the right depth? I don't think you can do nine and a half. Let's see. Uh ECI floor span tables. Uh, Easter. This says specifier Eastern BCI download. I didn't really want to download it, but anyway. So, yeah, this is what I want. I like these uh, BCI, these ones, this. Uh, 6000 series that has this 2 and a 5 16 top cord on them. They're, um, they give you a big, nice, flat section. You can see them here to nail your subfloor to. And so we're looking at, we're looking at, uh, wow, yeah, nine and a half wheel span. At 16 inches on center, they'll, it'll span, uh, the 6,000 series will span 16, 8, the 5,000 series, 
Yeah, so we're going to leave it at, I don't know. My knee-jerk reaction is to go with the default because the thing about it is you have a nice um, area to to do your plumbing in to get a nice pitch on the plumbing if you uh, and you got space more space for heating and air conditioning ducts uh, so you could do you could do 11 and 7 eighths at 19.2 inch centers so I think I'm going to change it just the reason I'm, the reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure my stairs you, you want to go with uh, you know, if you're if you're if you have any questions at all, you want to go with something a little deeper and then plan your stairs around them. You don't want to have to add a riser later on to your stairs and then have them run out into the floor because uh, it also adds another tread. So you're better off assuming um, assuming. Let's see. Let's try that one. I'll tell you. Yeah, you're better off assuming this, and then yeah. All right. So then we're gonna, and I'll, and at some point I'll, I'll explode this, and I'll put the LVLs in and all that. But for now, we're just gonna put our turn our sheeting back on, and then we're gonna take our second floor plan and I want to copy one thing I do with my two-dimensional floor plans let's get rid of some of these guidelines what I do with my floor plans is I make them a component okay and I leave one out here that's easy to work on okay so and I can also set up views for layout and all that so what I'm going to do is I've already made it a component okay so what I'm going to do is copy it And I'm gonna put it over this one. And then I'm gonna, oops, and I'm gonna get to where I can see, and I'm gonna raise it up. I like doing this because I like building the. Uh, gonna get through that so I can see. There we go. You can see now the reason I don't, the reason I line it up over the other one is because you can see this is now one thing we could do it just occurred to me on a uh, on the floor system if it's got this rim board you could go ahead and make it a uh, flush you know I, I actually like running I actually like running the sheeting up over the floor band but you can you can um, you can make it flush with the the sheeting however you want to do that because you certainly don't want to have to add um, uh, it's kind of optional that's uh, if these are the thing about it is if these are nine foot walls you don't have this nice condition anyway where the eight foot sheeting ends up like right under the floor system and then you can just skip the floor system if you make it flush with the sheeting and then start over but what I have found is that juncture between on a two-story house gets lumpy right here and it's best to hold your floor system back with the framing and then let your sheeting over uh, ride over it and smooth it all out because you know your eight foot sheeting is going to be right about here somewhere then your next row of sheeting is going to overlap that floor area and it tends to tie the two floors together better too Anyway, that's just uh, advice from 45 years of building stuff. All right, so now I'm going to turn off the floor sheeting because it's showing through on my floor plan. I'm also going to turn off the floor. Let's see, I need to put some of this stuff in, in the layers. I think because yeah, my floor framing stuff was added afterwards, so it needs to be put in the floor folder. This is one thing I like about SketchUp 2023. You can create these folders, 
and then you can do the way I do it is like site, foundation, floor, wall, roof, and then I can turn off the floor if I want to, and then I can just build my walls for the second floor. Now the thing about this house is is that you can see it's got a roof that's going to come down and sit. Actually, it's jacked up a couple of feet. I'm trying to see if that's the if it's sitting on the floor. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll set the roof on the on this situation. It'll set on the floor, but that's not going to work because see they're showing a. Uh, By the time we get to this tub, we need to have about, you know, we're going to need a, we're going to need a knee wall right here. And that may be what they're trying to do here is that they've just left it out on this one. This little knee wall should go probably all the way across because, and we're going to try that and see what that does. How far is that in? I put nine and a half. Okay, let's try. But how far is the porch? The porch should be the delinear. And see, this is where you have to start kind of uh, do, doing the real life uh, bit because these drawings are just out of magazines. They're not. I've found that some of them have never been built the way they're drawn before. And this is a good example because the framing, what we need is a knee wall. You're going to find out why I just happen to have the wherewithal because I've built many of these. And I don't need the other line. All I need, I need a wall. So, see, this is where. This is where your component, your floor plan being a component comes in handy. I can either edit this floor plan here or I can edit it over here. But since I've got it stacked on top of this other one, as a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and copy. I'm going to move this one over. Because over here is where I'll set up my views for uh, layout when I'm doing the construction documents. So I'm going to copy this one over and just put it neatly right there. And now I can kind of edit these and uh, after they kind of get covered up you can already see the first floor plans covered up so it's easier for me to come over here and make an edit to it and have it update this over here some of you might think that's an overkill but I like it so now I'm gonna walk my axis and did that hit that I feel like it did Yeah, and I'm gonna put a uh, I'm gonna come back a half inch this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these. Uh, I'm just going to put these knee walls in here for right now and then put the roof on just to, sh just to see where my gable walls need to go. So I'm going to put a wall here that is 2, 4, and I'm just going to start off with 24 inches. And let's see, yeah these can be interior walls, I'll update that. And so. Did it update? Yep. Put this here. I just want it to run to here. Let's see. It would run, oops, it would run into this wall, which is a half inch over. I might, might as well do my other half inch mark while I'm there. I'm going to exit. Let's see. Can I go back in to wall? Oh wait, I don't want to be editing this wall. Oh wait, I do. I, I was, what am I doing? I want a. Uh, I want to draw the walls first. 
that's what I want to do. Do my editing. Yeah. So I really I, what I really want to do here is put a 3.5 inch wall. Just this is going to be just drawn to indicate that um, I have two short walls that are not that are not at my cut line. And I'll probably just show them, I don't know, you can show them as dashed or just leave them unhatched or, or whatever. But that's where my two walls are going to go. So now I can go back. <coughs> I don't want to put the walls in that, in that group, so I'm going to go out and draw these 24 inch walls here and I want them to go all the way to let's see yeah to there and to here wrong side there we go there we go and now that's going to set my roof on top of that now back here What's this doing? I got this picture. Yeah, these are just full hot walls. So the thing is though, that's gonna make my roof a little asymmetrical. Because The only way to get the roof symmetrical at that point would be to um, have uh, a two foot wall right here, which doesn't make too much sense. The only thing is, if you set that wall, if you set the roof right down on the floor, you're not going to have this, you're not going to have this, uh, this any room right here in this closet uh, so let's look at this picture again you see I'm starting to think this picture is not this plan necessarily because see by the time you get you see the eight foot even this uh, even this gable right here doesn't have an eight foot ceiling at this wall you see where this wall hits the roof is only about four feet tall so that means that's about four feet tall which means that roof I got a feeling this roof is just not symmetrical which is not a huge deal but somebody might think it's a little weird But if you look at this picture, it does appear that um, if you follow that, yeah, if you follow that siding line, yeah, if you follow that this break line where the roof breaks back you'll see that that point is about the same back there so they may have actually framed up let's just let's just do something even if it's wrong we got uh, that's our mantra in construction just do something even if it's wrong. Do something. Just do something. We can fix it later. 
four inches tall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to experiment here and see if there is a Now I have a feeling if it was me, what I would do is I would, since I've got my floor joists running this way, I might even just build these walls up to that height. I may build these back walls because that would be 10, 11, 12. Yeah, that would be a 12 foot wall for the front and the back. So that may, that may be what I end up doing, but let's just put this roof on here and see because it'll be a see if we have any uh, anybody watching what? what no comments yet so see our game is going to go this way so we need to start this way let's do uh, roof rafters gable roof and I'm going in the right direction yeah we're going to go this way Going to set it on top of our little knee wall, which probably is going to become a um, front and back walls, which are just built up. I think we need to do at least a 10-12. I'm pretty sure that's what the other one is. We'll start off with that, and then this will be at least 16, maybe bigger. Rafter depth, ridge board, no ceiling joist. That's correct, Bob. 16 inches on center. Yes, reframing. Yes. Yes. And then I think we're just going to leave all this all this the same for now. We can always uh, change it. And that's too steep. <laughs> Let's go back and look at this. When I said 1012, I was kind of kind of questioning it a little bit. But you can see here, if we've got eight foot ceilings above, you got at least another six feet above that. But I still think this is probably going to be an 812 pitch. But that's why I use these extensions from Medique because I can just change it right there. And let's see what that does. The main thing is uh, we want to see what kind of headroom we have right here at the bathtub. So if this wall comes straight up, we lock that axis. If I can get it to lock, let's make sure we're actually at the bottom of a rafter. Four foot ten. So you see, that's why. I see this. This part is not a problem because it it sticks out. I mean, it's got its own little. It's got its own roof, so it's an intersecting gable. At some point, I'll have to. Um, But what I was going to do is draw this as a gable wall, a gable wall here. So, uh, and see these walls back here are not a problem either because they're full height walls. They just protrude up through the roof. Tell me something good. Tell me that you love me. Yeah, I think. Uh, what might have to happen is uh, this, and this is why you know it's good to have somebody who knows what they're doing uh, rearrange these floor plans, is because this might have to be rearranged a little bit, like because uh, you definitely you you definitely want. Uh, you want eight feet. I 
and the only way to get that is to get these spaces where it's not critical out here like say here you've easily got in this this laundry room you've got nine feet there see but see how far you have to come in to get nine feet you gotta come in 11 feet just to get nine feet and I don't know how steep they want this roof. And see, this house is not this floor plan, I can pretty much guarantee you, because you can see these three windows are relatively back up into, and so a lot of this space that's under the roof over here it's just either storage or or just attic space. And that's that's why this these top houses really aren't that efficient on the second floor because a lot of the space gets wasted up there. So I'm not even sure why, I mean I know why they do this is uh, these like these walls are not eight feet here on the side. They've got, they've got it set up to where there's a little vaulted part of the ceiling before you get to eight feet. It's just a look, it's just a style where it keeps this roof from being so tall. Let's turn the roof off for a second and well yeah let's uh let's create let's turn let's put these roof rafters in the roof put the soffit in the roof and we'll turn off the roof for a second and we'll build us a gable wall here wall gable wall and we want this one from here Is that two by six studs yeah I'll have to change that that's kind of, that's kind of the default for this thing so we can change it here we want this to be set up a we'll set up a, a trim band here on the floor system but right now we need to fix this uh, so we want this to be twenty four inches maybe a little less on each side and what did I say eight twelve like that yeah, that works. Now, uh, one of the things I ran into before, oh look, <laughs> this is what I was talking about, asymmetry. Let's see, <laughs> I got a different pitch. I forgot, I gotta change the pitch on this side. And I need to actually make the wall, I made this mistake once before, the wall needs to actually be seven feet longer it needs to be uh, 11. It needs to be 43 or whatever. Okay. And then move back. Let's see. Actually, I don't think it's going to matter in this case.
I'm not going to fidget with these too much because I'm probably going to have to change them. Let's see here, yeah, beginning corner, side corner. But now I'm remembering why I, I leave those walls short. Uh, because I don't think the, the gable wall is like playing nice. Let's see, maybe I'm wrong. start is outside corner. There we go. There we go. I didn't think I was going to get it to update there for a second, but yeah, now. I don't, it doesn't matter that much because um, I've got to extend the siding down anyway. So at some point I'll have to explode some of this and this is the same thing. This should be two outside corners. Outside corners. There we go. That fixed that. And so, if we turn our roof back on now, yeah, we should have a nice cable. But I'll have to, like I said, I'll have to explode this all this at one time I'm just kind of trying to get the bulk of it because like all these walls are going to be intersecting I mean comments Jennifer White why do you raise the pony wall up gable wall you could call it um, the gable wall is the end wall the gable wall is the, the sloped wall and the pony wall is the or knee wall as we call them is the, the little knee wall because what I was trying to do is give this uh, this bathroom this tub right here more height you can see it's still not high enough even raising it up two feet and I'm probably going to have to raise it up some more because if I draw a line straight up from here to the bottom of the rafters it's only four feet eleven so the only way to get it higher is to to raise the roof pitch up but that's uh you can't raise it up high enough practically to get the headroom there it would have to be like a, a 14 well let's see what would happen if we did a 12 12 which really is like the limit of where we go um, after that it would be a little bit you see it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> But even if you said, even if the owner said, "Why well, I'm going to build that whether that way, whether you liked it or not," you would still have you'd still only have six foot four there. And there's a vanity right here, so you really really need at least seven feet, a seven foot ceiling. Thinking that yeah, the code only allows. I think you can only go. Below, I think you have to have a seven foot minimum ceiling in a bathroom or a kitchen. So this is really going to end up being eight twelve. I think that's what I had the walls at. I turn my wall back on. Yeah, and then and then you just build these. Uh, you just build a little knee wall for whatever. I turn the walls back on. Let me turn the siding off for a while. The siding and the sheeting so we can see through. Um, that's why we build those knee walls to get it up. But those knee walls are going to have to be we're either going to have to rearrange the floor plan to where the bathrooms are in 
more interior say like right here this one is uh, let's turn the walls off again for a second this bathroom is doable because right here you're gonna have eight feet I think maybe not Yeah, you got eight foot three right there. So now this, uh, oh wait a minute, this whole, yeah, this whole part of the back are full height walls. So they'll protrude through the roof. It's just the walls that weren't intended to protrude through the roof. Like these, these walls were intended to protrude through the roof, but this one wasn't. <clears throat> you can see here, <clears throat> that bathtub is right here somewhere and I think what they've done is they've just built these knee walls high enough to get the pitch I wish I knew what that pitch was if I had a picture from the side I could get a better view but I really don't think it's more than a 812 good to see you though Jennifer if you're still there so I think what I'm going to do is maybe look at this for a second because uh, let's turn our roof off for a second. Maybe look at a, I, what I'm thinking is, and this is like I was saying earlier, this is what I see a lot with these magazine plans. They don't actually match the, the photographs like this 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 plan is probably close to this but I don't think I really don't think this bathtub and toilet I don't think this bathroom is right here um, what they'd be better off doing is putting putting this um, moving this bathroom out let's just see where we have to have let's draw us a box here on the floor I don't want to is that yeah I don't want to be editing that floor I'm gonna draw us a box like right here I will make it eight feet tall We'll make it a group just so it won't stick to anything else now I'm going to turn my roof back on and I'm going to move it over to where it touches actually that needs to be eight foot one uh, and an eighth actually 1.125 that's actually the stud wall okay so now if we take that volume and we move it over and have a little bird's mouth that will show us where how much of a bird's mouth do I have did I get close? It should be about three and a half inches to simulate the back oh two and a half I was close so let's move it back one inch that's literally where the wall can go for the bathroom see so this bathroom would have to be slid forward that far <coughs> now what you could do is reverse the plan let's see how could you do that you could um uh, i'm going to put myself a temporary line right here so I can move this box out of the way you could mirror this plan where the tub but then the door
really the only practical thing to do is to move. They would make this space smaller, and you could make this bathroom smaller. But see, these walls, these walls are going to protrude through the roof like that. where you get that effect of uh, see the, the bad news is the more you raise the roof up everything you know it's a give and take every time you raise the roof up it gives you less room on the back to put windows unless you leave out the roof in that part or you know so What I would do if it were mine is I would just move. I mean, you could let's say let's say if you made this a nine twelve or what is it now? It's just going to be so. It's at some point it becomes inefficient to make this roof so tall. That's, that was one. That's one reason why you don't really see a lot of these top houses because there's so much roof and space wasted this whole cavity up here is just attic space everything you can see if this were just the volume you can see how much wasted space there is in the attic and some you know some people might say that's not wasted you know it's usable but it's wasted space and if you're also paying for a roof system you're paying for long rafters, a lot of decking, a lot of roofing. You're paying for weird, you know, looking design. <laughs> so, what did I make it? Let's uh, edit this again. 912. Let's see where. So, you know, at some point it will become a, a, a choice by the owner. But let's see now how far back we can push it. You see, even in making that much more space, we only gain, you see what I mean? You don't gain that much room by wasting all this money. Wasting all this money on the on that. So the best thing to do is to make this a reasonable pitch, which is an 812. And it actually looks better. It doesn't look wacky that tall. And I'm going to, you know, I usually get the owners to watch these videos. So the best thing to do is to keep the roof line reasonable. This is more like what it is in this photograph. And draw these, and then draw this floor plan where it makes sense. And you're not going to lose that much room. The only thing you could. I would give up space in this room, but that's a lot of space. That is four feet and eleven. You know, we really don't have that kind of space. And the problem is, if I raise this whole roof up another foot, now you're looking at, see, it comes up so high on the back of this that um, C 
So the best thing to do is just to rearrange this floor plan up here. And let's check this. We haven't even checked this side yet. Yeah, you can see here. Yeah, now this honestly makes much sense because you can't, uh, if this if this is the other side, the bedrooms have to have an eight foot ceiling too. So the same, you want eight feet right here too. So, they're, uh, I'm pretty sure that this floor plan is not this house. I'll have to go back and see. I mean, they've tried, it looks like they've attempted to, like this pitch would have to come out. You see how they have this break in, this, in the porch? Uh, you would have to do this roof line where it comes, this roof line where it comes all the way out to get that kind of headroom. In other words, it would have to move out farther. You see, the more I remove this roof out, the more headroom I get. But that, that practically covers the whole thing if I do that. And then it gets tall again. So I really need to revisit this floor plan for the second floor. And I'm gonna to have to go over this with the owner to see what we can do to see what is going on. What you could do is do a a big gable, like if this were if this came out. Might not look that great though. Then you could do a gable in the middle of it. And then you'd get that whole volume. That's the only way to really get this whole volume up here. You're not going to get this whole volume up here with this low pitch and that and these low walls. This is not this is not this floor plan for the second floor. I can promise you, promise you that. Now what you could do is when you get. Uh, when you get to the back, you could move this gable down. I thought I was close to the ridge, but you could move this gable down close to there. And then when you get back, well, what we can do, we just draw another box where this just goes back to here. And then this one has a, a shed roof on it. You know, it's back in. It would come to here somewhere. And this would raise up. This is kind of what you do. You do these kind of massing models whenever you're trying to just show an owner something like that. Yeah, you could do something like that. But to get these, um, And 
then you would just have your uh, Then you'd have your transition roof out here. This would go from like here to there, like that, like it is. Maybe down lower. kind of funky but you see what I mean you can't otherwise you're not going to be able to get the volume you're not going to be able to get the ceiling heights you need in those spaces now this one uh, yeah we have to just work it out have to run to the farmers market hey Gary how's it going Thanks, Jennifer, for stopping by. How about a scissor truss? Well, <laughs> scissor truss would actually take up more space. If you do rafters, you don't have that double that double roof inside. And uh, but what I'm going to do is probably going to have to try to explain this to the owner. I'm going to move that back 80 feet for now so I can use it later. Probably what I'm going to have to do to demonstrate this is just go ahead and turn off the roof and build these interior walls. I turned off the wall framing, didn't I? There we go. And let's go ahead and do this wall. Gable wall. From here. Is that two to six again? Yeah, let's see if I have to change that. here. I don't have to edit that. To uh, 24. 24. 8. 8. And lap siding. Two before a wall. I got that. And then these walls, they've got these walls that like, uh, so we know the windows are at about six foot ten. So it looks like they're about six foot walls there on the sides. But that's going to cut down on your headroom. I think what I'm going to do is show them at eight feet. Well, that kind of you kind of lose that bungalow effect. You lose that kind of the the, the point of these gables that are built like this is to kind of chop off the corner of the wall. But um, I 
I'm not sure. I'm not sure you want to. We'll, we'll do. We'll start out with six feet and see how that works out. See, these two would be six feet. Yeah. So let's do. Well. Seventy two. Twenty four. Like a half inch here. I lost my wall thing. I was trying to exit out of that to do the wall thing. Seventy two, two by four. Darn it. I need to cut this back a half inch. Twenty foot four and a half. And we also want to be lap siding. over here hopefully it saved that 72 to the 4 yeah dang it I did it again I forgot to put my Thankfully, it's easy to fix. Four and one and a half. And then moss on that side. And then this would be a gable wall. Gable wall, and we want it to be eight twelve, eight twelve, and we'll start off with the seventy two, seventy two, update, and then we'll do slap siding. You can set up wall presets, but these are all these little custom walls are kind of a pain. I don't want to set up custom walls for all of them so it's easier. Oh, I forgot to change it to a two before wall too. I can do that. Let's see. Uh, screwed that up. Got to set it back a half inch and this needs to move this way a half inch. Yeah, we got to move this this way a half inch. Now we're ready. This is still all faster than the way I used to do it. <laughs> Especially these gable walls, they're a pain in the butt to draw by hand. Eight, because somebody will, they'll change the pitch on me five times, and and I just it, it wears you out. Update. Let's see. We want a two by four wall. Update. We want lap siding. Update. If I get it all right and then save it or use it once and kind of successfully, it will save that configuration for the next wall.
I quit zooming in crazily. There we go. Now let's turn our roof back on and we will see Look at our picture. They actually have that set back. See, that's why I'm that's why I'm telling you this this floor plan doesn't match this house because you see how they have the wall coming all the way out to the end. Let's see. Yeah, it's hanging out over the porch, which is fine, but. This is not the same. This is not the same floor plan for that picture. So that'll be something we need to talk about. It actually look better if it wasn't sticking out so far. It, it looks better if you have a little roof there, like like in this, like the way it's built in real life. You can see this. This is set back past the edge that past the end of the porch it's not coming out all the way but to get this bedroom the size it is to get it 10 foot deep 10 foot four deep it has to come out that far <clears throat> I just don't think this is that and uh, that's becoming obvious here <clears throat> So then, if we had a gable roof, that went from, uh, roof rafters, gable roof, from here. I'm just gonna run it over here wild somewhere for now. Cause I'll have to explode it later oh, gotta fix the pitch let's just run it over to there and then we'll fix the huh it does say eight sixteen inches Let's just say, yeah, for now, okay, yeah, the the pitch it was displaying on that uh, when I was doing it was less than. And so then you'd have a shed roof from here to here. What you do is we could probably fix this right here to where what is it calling the front and back overhang left why does that say eight what does that do oh so that should be zero yeah and then um I wonder why that looked funny earlier. It didn't occur to me why it looked weird. Because, uh, see, then what will happen is the rafters will go from there to out here. But it's almost to the point to where if this roof pitch was right, it would connect. You could just work out a pitch that was straight, and maybe that's what we do. Maybe we raise this up so that there's a uh, so that if we turn all this other stuff off like the sheeting or cladding or sheeting and we get us a line where the this bird's mouth isn't right on this one should be yeah three and a half that matters and you'll see why it raises it up see 
And so what that does is it allows us to project a line where this would hit. You see what we need that line, we need that roof to do is go like, you know, go from like here, you know, here. We need that to be a smooth transition. Well, if, if all I'm saying is that in, if we did that, then we would have more headroom in, inside. So we could flatten the roof and raise it up. That's probably what needs to happen. So if we raise it up, a, let's try an experiment here. So if we raised it up a foot, let's do this. Get on something straight here. Is my axis locked? Yeah. 12. And then how far does that get us? Get us out. But then we then we lowered it to a 712. This is probably what they did. They probably just raised it up and lowered the pitch. You see now the the more we do that, the more it projects out. To the end. See, it'll just keep getting. It'll just get keep getting closer. But so there's a combination of that plus rearranging this plan right here. So if I draw a line up from here now get my axis locked. This is all the stuff you gotta do when you're planning this out because if you just start willy-nilly building and you haven't figured this out then you're gonna have a, a huge surprise waiting on you. So that's still only five feet right there. Uh, so I don't know What I really need to do is meet with the owner and see if this transition, this transition right here is part of the character of the house. This is kind of like your old farmhouse bungalow where you'd have a porch on the front and it would have a, a low pitch and it would transition. That transition there and this where this roof cuts off the corner of these walls is part of the it's sort of iconic of it's 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 a archetypical <laughs> of this style so the more you change that the more you get away from it and so you gotta decide what your priorities are on design see and so if this is pushed back uh, the other thing I, you know, I showed earlier that um, normally all this stuff is pushed back a little bit, you know, say four feet, and then that front porch roof wraps around this, see, like this right here. That roof is, that wall is not out on the same plane as the porch, like it's shown on this drawing. This is, this is not the floor plan for this house. So I'm trying to make it as close as I can, but you can see there's some some work to be done, man. Anybody leaving any comments? That bearded guy, hello, sir. How are y'all doing on Saturday morning? It's really not, I guess it's still morning, isn't it? I've been working on this for a couple of hours and I thought I'd just go live with it so I'm trying to come up with a a good way to make this floor plan work. Let's turn off some of these guidelines. If it were me, what I would do is I'd rearrange this to where this tub and this this was not close to this 
wall where the roof comes down. It needs to be more interior. And then your storage space is like this closet. See, this makes sense here because this closet doesn't matter if it has a, a low ceiling or a sloped ceiling in it. Um, uh, but this does matter because the code won't allow you to have a five foot ceiling in a bathroom. <laughs> I think you can only you can have you can have a sloped ceiling in a bathroom, but I think it has to go. Let's ask ChatGTP right quick. This is one thing cool. I use ChatGTP all the time. Is I would have to pay to access online. Let's see what does the IRC, that's the International Residential Code, say about sloped ceilings in bathrooms and kitchens i think you can have sloped ceilings but they can't go below seven feet from what i remember it's been a while since i as of my last update however is important of building codes can be in general dealing with sloped ceilings bathroom kitchen common concerns values for instance, adequate, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I'm not asking for your opinion. I'm asking for what the code says. It's not specifically, yes it does. It says the IRC does not specifically address sloped ceilings, but it does. This is why you gotta be careful about chat GTP. I think, I think the IRC does address uh, minimum ceiling heights. Maybe I used the wrong terminology, and this is what you have to be careful of. With it's just a, uh, it's just logic. It's not, it's not a real person like people think. <laughs> it's not, it doesn't have conscious. I think the IRC does address minimum. I abbreviate minimum, minimum ceiling heights in baths and kitchens. Let's see what it says now. You're correct. See what I mean? You see what I'm talking about? <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, habitable rooms, corridors, hallways, minimum ceiling height, seven feet. Okay. Bathrooms, toilet rooms, laundry rooms, minimum ceiling height, six foot eight. Okay. Kitchens, at least 50% of the kitchen should have a minimum ceiling height of seven feet. Okay, the remaining portion of a kitchen may be sloped, but no part of it should be less than five feet, which is, would be ridiculous to have that in a kitchen, unless you were in some kind of little efficiency apartment and you just had to. So you see, this is a good example of your prompts for ChatGTP. Now I use it like this because I'm a certified building inspector from way back in the 90s. And I kind of know what the code says, but I like to get reminders, but I also like testing chat GTP and seeing it's what its knowledge base is. And of course now we're, you have to be careful of what version because, uh, you know, the cutoff for chat GTP was for its language model was 2021. So, but the code word we've adopted in Chattanooga, Tennessee is 2018 IRC, so it's okay. But I did remember there were some minimum ceiling height requirements. So, in bathrooms, minimum ceiling height is six foot eight, which makes sense. Um, I thought it was seven feet, but I would have been more correct uh, or better off you're better off with a seven foot ceiling especially where you have a, a shower you don't want a shower ceiling to be lower than seven feet because your shower head needs to be up at like six foot six you know if you're especially if you're a tall person um, and so you've just got you know a little cavity of moisture right there hanging out and it's hard to ventilate a ceiling lower you know lower than that so the point is here is that um, Knowing all that and having experience building these things, I know that this isn't going to work the way it's shown in this picture. 
It's because they're literally showing this bathtub right here. And that that wall height is maybe five feet, something like that. Like that. Well, kind of like what I originally had it in here. Um, so, let's see if we have any more comments from the guest in the chat. What's wrong with this foundation? Well, I don't have the foundation. <laughs> I don't have the foundation yet. <laughs> foundation is kind of the easy part. Well, a lot of California builders won't do slope roofs due to lawsuits. You mean on the inside? You mean like uh, on, um, I don't know what, why you do, I mean, I've done, I've been building for 45 years. I've done a bunch of slope roofs. Uh, uh, if you're, are you talking about ceilings or roofs? I've done both sloped, vaulted, uh, coffered, all kinds of ceilings. Never had any lawsuits. My insurance company loves me. Where's some wood? My 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 general liability company loves me because I've never had any claims. <laughs> and like, never. I was gonna say, 30 years, but never. <laughs> So, I've been a license contractor for 20, see, in, in, ten, in Tennessee, we didn't even have the licensing law until about 22, 23 years ago. So, before that, you didn't have to have a license to be a contractor. So, uh, but I still had insurance. I still had liability insurance. Uh, so... I think what I'm going to have to do is, let me turn off these roofs. I'm going to have to get with the owner, and which I was going to do anyway, and figure out this situation with this floor plan because I think this, this wall would look better stepped back from the edge of the porch like it is in this picture, this photo, because that's part of the style of this house. The style of this house doesn't call for that wall to be out here on the same plane. Uh, it's part of the, you know, the character or the, like I said, the archetype of this design, this bungalow, is to have this low slope pitch on the porch and then transition to a steeper pitch, and then to have these dormers that were living spaces that were big enough to have a room in. But you'd have the corners cut off of the walls. This would not be a full height wall. And when you're in that room, it has a little character because the ceiling is vaulted for two or three feet, and then the ceiling is up here. So I've lived in several houses like this uh, growing up. So I'm familiar with how they're built, and actually have built them. Uh, and then this back. What's weird about this house is is that it shows this roof being down low on, on this low enough to have a standard size window, but if you want the roof to be symmetrical, you're gonna you're gonna build this knee wall just like you did up here, and otherwise the the roof is gonna be wanky. It'll be up here and down here, so the center of the ridge will be off off center. Uh, and you won't have this, uh, you won't have much room. But in doing this, you don't have much room. I uh, said, so I'll take that 80 feet. Yeah, and if we turn the roof back on, you don't have a lot of room for windows back here. If you raise this wall. So, I've got some issues. Let's see, let me turn this back to 812. Where I had it before. There we go. We have some issues we need to work out. So I think what I'm going to do is cut it here, and I need to, because I don't want to spend a lot of time drawing this. Let's go back here 80 feet again. 
uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time drawing on this roof and all that and then come to find out we're going to re revise the floor plan because I think that's what needs to happen on the second floor is that these this bathroom needs to be moved more towards the interior and spaces that don't matter as much need to be moved out to this low part of the roof there reason it's caused a lot of builders were cutting corners and people were going, getting hurt. How are they getting hurt? I mean, people getting hurt is a really a matter of uh, you know just job site safety. I'm always going around. Um, you know, when my framers are there and they start doing something crazy. I'll be like, no, you know, like they're infamous for leaning a ladder up crazy and not bracing the bottom of it off. And I'll go around with the, you know, wood stobs and drive them in at the bottom to keep the bottom of the ladder stable, that kind of stuff. And when we're doing steep pitch roofs, we'll, we'll get rope, rope systems up, you know. I actually, when in my 20s, I actually slid off of a roof and fell on a pile of gravel and sand and it, it messed me up. <laughs> it took me like several weeks to get over that. And that was when we used to use uh, felt that were not properly braced and were collapsed. Oh, yeah. Um, we used to, back in the old days, we used to use felt, uh, roofing felt, and it was notorious for, um, you know, on these steeper pitch roofs. Uh, Especially on a hot day, you'd be there nailing the felt down over the sheeting, and um, next thing you know, the heat's heating up that old tar paper is really all it is, and, and it would start sliding, and you'd start sliding with it, and you're just gone, man. You just can't. You know, now we have these synthetic felts, which are a lot better. I use liner lock. Um, liner lock I think it's called um, uh, synthetic I know I'm not spelling it correctly yeah there's several different brands um, I'm surprised oh, there's rhino roof I've used that before synthetic oh yeah here we go liner lock this is what I use right here it's almost it's like a Tyvek for the roof, but it's not as slippery. If you've ever laid Tyvek down, like when you're building a wall and you and you're putting the Tyvek on it before you raise it up, and you walk on it, you will it'll slide like like a sheet of ice. But these these roofing felts have a better surface for walking on them. Um, see if we can get a bigger picture. Yeah. Yeah, you see, you can actually you can actually walk on liner lock on a steeper pitch. You, you'd be you'd have to have a rope if that was Tyvek. You'd be sliding off the roof. All right. Well, where are we? Where's my live stream at? Got a lot going on here. Never heard of that being used for a ceiling. Never heard of what being used for a ceiling. Synthetic roof felt. Well, I've been using synthetic roof felt for 15 years. <laughs> At least 15 years. Yeah. It's a lot better. It's a lot better than... It won't blow off. I mean, after a couple of days of roofing felt, just regular old tar paper, the sun will dry it out, it shrinks up, and it starts to pull loose from the nails, and then the wind catches it and it blows off. The only time you can get by with using roofing felt is if, you, uh, if you're going to nail the roof on like the next day, then you're okay. But I wouldn't use it. I haven't used it in forever because it's just nasty stuff. A roll of synthetic roofing felt will cover 400 square feet, and it's really not that expensive. And if somebody's not using that right now, they're just like really stuck in the Stone Age. <laughs> and and if you think about it too, I mean, a, a regular roll of roofing felt 
I think 30 pound only covers a square, 100 square feet. So you're better off just coming into the modern age. And the other thing is too, uh, synthetic felt will dry a house in for months. I mean, it's not going to blow off the house. It's going to be, you know, you staple it down good, and it's not coming off the house because the the it's a woven product like Tyvek is, and when it won't pull through the nails or the staples, you know, or the button caps. Some people use button caps to put it on. If you notice in that picture, they were using button caps to. Sometimes they'll, if you see these button caps. Yeah, that's a button cap gun right there. So we usually use a combination. We'll usually, what we usually do is roll it out and staple it to, just to hold it in place. And then we'll have somebody coming back with button caps, putting them down. But this is a lot better, a lot better than felt. Felt really should be outlawed on roofs. <laughs> Let's see, where do we go? Oh, shoot. I think I actually deleted my, uh, I actually deleted it. So anyway, I'm going to end it here. If, uh, <laughs> I accidentally deleted the, the back end of the live stream, but I'm, I need to go talk to the uh, owners about this project. Let me see if there's, uh, any more comment. Now I'm looking at the back end of the YouTube site. It's probably back feeding too. But um, I don't know what they use now because I've been off. Oh. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, bearded guy. Hope you're doing okay. I'm going to, um, I might retire in like five years. I'm 60 now, but I feel younger. I don't feel 60, so I feel like I could go for another 10 years maybe. Even though I have fallen off houses and falling off scaffolding. I had I had jack boards break on me one a jack post break on me one time and uh, the whole the whole thing collapsed. We fell down into uh, you know when you're when you dig your foundation how it's you know like on a basement house you'll have the over over dig so you have this big trench beside the foundation. We fell down like from the second floor like right here all the way down inside that beside where the basement is and it was uh it really felt like slow motion like you think like you hear you're trying to like grab something on the way down you know and you're getting splinters in your hand and your your tool bags turning upside down and nails are floating in the air and <laughs> then there's that sudden boom when you hit the ground and it wakes you uh snaps you out of the slow motion so uh but anyway, all right, well, thank you guys for watching, and I got to go talk to some of these issues uh, with the homer, homeowner, uh, Frank, and uh, I'll do an update on this. Thank you. Thanks for watching, guys.